All right. Hello, everyone. We have a lot of people joining us right now. Yeah. This is amazing. We have about 100 and 200. Oh, my goodness, the number is going up. Um, so hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, we are here today with uh, Maze co-founder Jonathan, and we have Bozina, um, director of marketing as well. Um, they're going to be joining us today, giving us um, a really great introduction and demo of Maze. Um, for our Design Lab students, welcome. I'm sure a lot of you have used this before and probably curious as to what else Maze can do for you um, in your design process. Um, so I'm Emily, I am the community manager for Design Lab. Welcome everyone who's not part of the Design Lab community. Hopefully after this, um, you may wanna join. We do fun webinars like this all the time um, and it's mostly based off of the feedback of our community, so it's awesome. Um, so quick logistics, if um, everyone can say hello, say where they're from in the chat, um, there's a tab. On the right side of the screen, there's a chat tab. Go ahead and say hello. And then if anyone has questions about either product, so about Design Lab, about Maze, we're gonna post those questions in the questions tab, just so that way we can keep all of our answers organized. And then if we find that there are any questions at the end or things that are interesting, we'll probably save those for later so Jonathan can kind of give us his take on it. Um, so yeah, with that said, I'm gonna hand it over to Jonathan who's gonna take it away for us. All right. Hello, everyone. It's it's pretty wild to see hello from Kazakhstan, Austria, London, everywhere. So hello from from Paris on my end, uh, in, in lockdown Paris, where I'm at. I'm sitting today at the WeWork. Super excited to give you an, an intro to Maze and talk to talk about uh, research and how to do research at scale. Um, I'm going to start by giving you a quick uh, rundown on what's the value of design and why we do research anyway, right? Like the the, the real questions on how do you sell. Uh, upwards to how to sell design, how to sell research. I have a small presentation, and I'll be accompanied by uh, my dear Bojena, who is our head of marketing, uh, who will be who will be answering questions with me today as well. So, uh, without further ado, let's let me share my screen, and I'll I'll jump on a small presentation. All right. So uh, this is speech for those of you who are not familiar. So I'm the founder and CEO at Maze. Um, what is what is Maze? But before we talk about Maze, let's talk a bit about design. So I think Dana she's also the best when she says, "If you think good design is expensive, you should look at the cost of bad design." So a great question we can ask is, "What is good design? Uh, what is the value of good design, and what is the cost really of bad design? And how does research solve all of that?" Well, first of all, what's the value of design? Um, so. McKinsey ran a big survey in 2020 called the Business Value of Design, in which they audited more than 500 companies. And they looked at the Fortune 500 and said, which are the companies that are well performing and which are the companies that are investing in design? And what they realized was that the companies that are today investing in design uh, outperform by up to 2x the industry benchmark for the same category. So investing in design is now a proven way for companies to grow and a proven strategy for companies to invest money. So great design makes money, but great design also saves money. Uh, one of the key numbers is that it's 100 times less expensive to fix a user experience issue before going into development than fixing it after going into development. And this includes not only the cost of development, right? Because poor user experience also leads to lost businesses, uh, brand damage, cost of support increasing as well. All of this is baked into the cost uh, of great design and not, in, in, uh, not investing in great design. So great design makes money, great design saves money, but also great design is a key differentiator. Um, so in today's day and age, great design and great user experience is expected from products. 40% uh, of customers turn to competition after a bad user experience. So investing in design not only makes money uh, in the sense of uh, even a solid investment, it saves money and it's necessary for your business to grow. So for us as designers, it's important to be able to have these numbers in mind in order to be able to explain why investing in great design and then why investing in research makes sense. So how do we achieve great design? If design is so important and great user experience is so important. Well, obviously uh, user research is the key. And um, if you ask a designer what's user research, you're going to have a lot of different definition. I use the definition of Jacob Nielsen and Don Norman. Uh, if you don't know who these two fellows are, they created the Nielsen Norman uh, group, which is considered to be the best design consultancy group in the world. Uh, this guy, Don Norman, actually coined the term user experience. And this guy, Jacob Nielsen, was the head of research at a small company called Apple. And together, they, they created this framework in which they said research exists at three different stages in the product development process. Strategize being pre-design, when you want to assess where and how what you're going to build uh, as part of your product. 
the execute phase that comes at the design phase when you want to know and optimize your design to reduce the risk and improve the usability. And finally, the assessment phase, which exists post-development, where you want to measure your product usability and measure your product against your competitors. And for each of these categories comes a lot of different methods of, of studies, uh, ranging from field studies to card sorting, to tree testing, to usability testing. So research really encompasses a lot of different methods that apply to a lot of different phases of the product development process. But the problem is that user research solution uh, kind of suck today. Um, I've been lead UX design and lead UX research in different agencies before. And one thing that I can tell you is that when you go to a client today and you say, well, we're going to spend the next two weeks uh, trying to find five people to run a test with, uh, and then we're going to watch recordings of them, extract the insights, create the report, and that's going to cost you anywhere ranging from 12 to 20K. The first thing they're going to tell you is, let's design instead, right? Research is always the first thing that gets squeezed out of budget because it's so slow, it's so expensive. And then ultimately, because if you were successful in selling research, the amount of data that you're able to collect during moderated and unmoderated video recording sessions uh, is very limited. You only get five testers or a bit less than that to be able to base your, your insights on, which no one really cares about. So research sucked until now, obviously. Um, so Maze, what is Maze? The too long didn't read version of Maze is that we turn the process that you to take literally weeks and thousands of dollars to extract insights into a process that takes minutes to get to get things tested and validated at scale. Um, you can test with your own users for free and unlimited. You can hire from our panel of 70,000 testers. And we allow you to use the tools that you already know and love, like Envision, Marvel, Sketch, Figma, and turn that into an actionable test in a matter of minutes. And that's what we're going to demo today. So if you have any questions regarding this part, or if you want the deck at the end, uh, feel free to let me know, and I'll share the deck with you as well. So before we get started with the demo, I want to show you a quick prototype uh, called Places. This is the prototype that we're going to use for the demo. It's created in Vision. Um, if you want a more in-depth session in the future using Figma or Marvel or Sketch or whatever tool you're using, uh, Adobe XD is coming in the future as well. This is kind of, uh, uh, you, uh, you're the first to know. Um, we, we can do a, a more in-depth session in the future if you want. So to get started, this app is called Places. Uh, it's an app that allows you to record the places that you like around you. It's a simple InVision prototype. For this app, we have some critical flows. So we have a walkthrough, so three slides explaining how the app works. Um, then we can get started, and we can see a list of places that we like. Uh, then we can click on a place to see how to get there. We can change the transportation mode from walking to driving. And finally, we can filter the places to only display restaurants. So you can see a very simple, very straightforward prototype. So the way Maze is going to work is that we're going to connect to our interface here, and we're going to click New Project here. And from here, what we want to do is create a maze user testing uh, project. I'll explain a bit more on the discovery at the end. So let's copy and paste our prototype. And we're just going to click Create. And we're, we're, we'll be able to get started. So what's a maze? Well, a maze is simply a compilation of missions or tasks that you want your testers to perform on your prototype in order to move forward. And a, a mission is simply defined by three things, the task, the title, what you want the tester to do, the description, giving a bit more depth into what you want the tester to do. And finally, the expected path, which is the path that we, you expect the testers to take to complete the mission. So let, let's create our first mission. So I'm going to create walkthrough. And we're going to ask the testers to learn how to use the app. And so the path that I expect the testers to take to learn how to use the app is very simple. I want them to click here click here, and finally click here. So as you can see, creating passes is extremely easy. It's just simply clicking on your prototype the way that you defined it inside your favorite prototyping tool. And then afterward, we're going to create more blocks. And Maze comes loaded with a lot of different blocks, uh, ranging from yes, no question, to opinion scale, to multiple choices, open questions, tree testing, card sorting. We'll do everything. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of, uh, let's say, usability research. So we're going to create an opinion scale. And we're going to ask the testers, um, how easy was the onboarding process? And we're going to say hard on the left, easy on the right. We're going to make that a scale ranging from 0 to 5. And we can even change the type of scale we want. So we can put stars, we can put emotions, because this is kind of a more emotional flow. We're going to put emotions here to get the emotional response from people. Then we're going to create another block. And this one, we're going to create a second mission to test our second flow. So we're going to call the mission Let's Eat. 
And we're going to ask the testers uh, to go to the big Fernand restaurant by car. So to go to the restaurant, the big Fernand restaurant by car, I click on big Fernand here, and I change the transportation mode from walking to driving. Again, very easy, very straightforward to get started. If you have more passes that you want to add, multiple passes, for example, that are multiple expected passes, you, you just click on the add pass here, and you'll be able to create as, much, as many passes as you'd like. Let's create a new block. And for this one, we're going to do a bit of product research. So we're going to create a multiple choice question, and we're going to ask which other type of places would you like, sorry, would you like to record? And here, we're going to start creating multiple choices. So we're going to say bars, restaurants, uh, museums, parks. And we're going to make that a multi-select. So it's very easy as well to switch between single select and multi-select for your test. Afterward, we're going to create one last mission that we're going to call filter. And we're going to ask the testers to filter the list to display restaurants. So for this mission, we don't want to start on the screen. So we can simply click on the change your starting screen here and change it to the home page on which we're going to define our new pass. So here, we want them to click on filters and say filters. All right. So here, we're going to do a bit of market research now. So we're going to create a yes, no block. And we're simply going to ask if this was available tomorrow. Let's say if this app was available tomorrow, would you download it? And here, what we can do is uh, we can add conditions. So this is very much in beta. We just started introducing this. So I'll show you how that works in just a moment. So here, let's say that they reply yes to this question. What we want to do is start collecting, for example, their email addresses to add them to our beta list. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, add your email address to get updates about the product. And we're going to make that this open question an email, which means that people won't be able to pass this question unless they put they input it an email. And you can make this not required as well, which is very easy and allow people to skip the question. If they reply no to the question, then we want to get a bit more information about why won't they, why won't they download the product. So we get a bit more uh, market research going on as well. So let's say, why not? And we're going to make that a simple text. So let's go back to our yes, no question. We're going to click conditions here. And we're going to say, if the answer is yes, so they are interested in the app, then move them to add your email address to get updates. And if the answer is no, then move them to the why not. Another thing that I need to do is add a simple conditions here that says, um, always go to the thank you screen, because we want them to not go through the why not question as well. And here, we're going to create one final question, which is leave some feedback. We want them to leave some extra feedback as well. Uh, some key things to note as well regarding the open question is that you can make it a text, a numerical, so people won't be able to type letters, but only numbers, a date, so that people will only be able to input dates. So here, actually, I'm going to put that to the leave some feedback. All right. Um, from here, we can also customize the welcome screen and the thank you screen that will be displayed to the testers. This is important uh, because this is automatically translated in 18 different languages. So for people all across the world that are part of this call, there's a very big chance that your language is supported on Maze. Uh, but what you can do here is that you can also, for example, take this text and input in emails and do some markdown as well. So for example, let's say that we wanted to highlight some part of our text. This is very easy to do as well. You can create some markdown. If we wanted to put a link to our website, for example, so that people can be redirected and rewarded at the end of the test, we simply have to, have to type in the link to our website and it will be highlighted and clickable for people to be able to be redirected. In our case, we don't, we're not really interested in customizing the thank you screen. So we have everything ready. Um, there's a lot more options that I'm happy to, to dive into and we'll dive into the rest of the blocks afterward as well. Uh, we can preview our maze to see how it works. I'm pretty confident in what I just did. So I'm just going to say, uh, let's not preview it and let's just send it live. Um, but we, we will be able to dive into more specifics as well afterward. So let's click start testing. Once you click start testing, your maze is going to go live, which means that you won't be able to edit it afterwards. So make sure that you preview it, that you share it with the people that you work with to make sure there's no typo, there's no errors in your pass as well, because everything will be recorded from this point on. All right, so we started testing. We have companies because obviously it's a party. And for here, we have multiple options. You can copy your link to share, with your, to share it with testers. You can hire testers from our own panel. 
uh, our tester panel costs three dollars per tester, and the price decreases with volume. So you can get really uh, testers at scale for a very cheap cost as well. And this allows you to have testers um, almost instantly. Twenty testers take anywhere between thirty minutes to two hours to complete your entire test. So if you need to have very fast, very rapid insights in your prototype or in your project, you can hire our testers from our panel if you don't have access to your own testers. But what we're going to do here is simply copy our link. And when we copy our link, um, our link works in any browser, in any device. So it's fully responsive. It works on mobile, on desktop, on tablet. Uh, if your mobile is a, is, if your prototype is a mobile prototype, it works really everywhere. And from here, we're just going to copy and paste this link. And it works without any third-party apps, any plugin, straight in the browser. So very seamless for your testers to get started, which is very important. So this part is automatically translated in 18 different languages. Uh, you can you, you can force the language. I'll show you how to do that if you're interested. But from here, we're just going to get started. So here we have our first mission. And Maze is very much like a game where people have to complete mission in order to move forward to the next one. So here, the walkthrough, let's learn how to use the app. So we're going to click Get Started. And we're going to start clicking on our prototype. So to learn the app, I'm just going to click on the, the screen and learn a bit. So locate the places, all right. I'm going to click Get Started. We completed the mission, we can move on to the next one. So let's click Continue. Here, we ask how easy was the onboarding process. I'm going to say it was very easy. Uh, and we can move on to the next mission. So let's eat. Let's go to the big fan and return by car. And for this mission, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get lost a bit. So I'm going to click on Filters, save the filters, go to big fan and do some misclicks because I don't really know where to click or where to go. And finally, find my way through the prototype. So I find my way through the prototype, but I didn't take the path that you expected me to take to complete the mission. So which other type of places would I like to record? I'm going to say restaurants and museums. And we're going to move on to the filter. And so to filter for this mission, I'm just going to get lost entirely. So I don't know where to click. I don't know what to do. I change it to driving. I'm lost and confused. I have two options. I can leave the page, and everything that happened before that will be recorded. Or I can click the give up button that's always available for testers so that they can automatically move on to the next mission. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, if this app was available tomorrow, would you download it? Let's say yes. Um, and from here, as you can see, we have our options that's being displayed. So add your email address to get updates about the product. I'm going to say uh, hello at maze.design. If you have any request or question about maze, you can send an email to hello at maze.design. We'd be happy to receive your, your messages. Oh, leave some feedback. Put it as an, as an email, but it's fine. My feedback is June 2nd, it's fine. Um, and here we're done. Uh, the test is completed. As you can see, going from having a prototype to having a test ready takes literally minutes. Having a test to having the test fully completed by testers takes literally minutes as well. And from here, we're going to dive into the data. And then we'll, we'll be able to dive into your questions. So um, my maze is not very interesting because I only have one tester, which is myself. but uh, funny enough, I prepared the same maze with 72 testers so that we have a bit more data to, to learn from. So as you can see here on the left, uh, we have all the blocks that we created. So the walkthrough, the opinion scale, et cetera. And on the right, we have the context for the block that I'm selecting on the left. So here, for example, how clear were these introduction screens? We have this opinion scale, so we can see that the introductions were pretty clear. On the mission now, this is the most important part. On the mission, we're going to do something that, that we call aggregation of data. So here, we aggregate the data based on three different things. The direct success, which are the testers that went through the expected path. The indirect success, which are the testers that, that went from A to B but uh, got lost in the middle. And finally, the give up bounds, which are the, the testers that gave up. And here, what we do is we aggregate the data on the testers um, based on the path that they took. So here, we can see that 37 testers, 57.8% of the testers, took this exact path with an average duration of 9.6 seconds to complete and a mystic rate of 5.4%. And if I click on the path itself, I'll see all the heat maps that have been generated for every screen as part of this path. I can see all the screen metrics as well. So I can see the mystic rate for screens, the time spent on every screen, the number of testers that went through this specific screen. And then I can dive even deeper. I can say I want to see only the first and second click that have been performed on this specific screen. And I can dive even deeper than that. I can say I want to filter out some of the testers that are part of this uh, of, of these selected clicks. And if I want to dive even deeper than that, I can create areas on top of my product and see how many testers clicked here, who were these testers, when did the click happen, uh, what was the click order for these clicks as well. So I can dive 
as much as I want into the heat maps and get to learn exactly what people intended to do and when did they intend to do it. I can switch from heat maps to clicks to have a better view of exactly where they clicked. And if I want, I can even download that as an image and put it in my own report uh, or to share that with colleagues or coworkers. Then if I want to dive even deeper than that, you can scroll down here and see the list of individual tester session and look at the same level of KPIs and metrics for each one of your tester. And if I click on this path, for example, here I see I have a give up, which took seven, almost uh, one minute to complete for a very simple mission. And I want to know what happened. So I'm going to click on the path itself and I can see the heat map generated for this specific user and the whole path for this specific user. So I can get a better understanding on what happened during the testing session. And here, because I clicked on the tester here, I can see that I have the full tester journey. So I can see where he struggled or where she struggled uh, and the different responses he or she gave during his or her testing process. Then I can see my opinion scale and I have the same level of detail below here where I can see every tester and uh, the responses that they gave. I can see the filter mission, the multiple choice with the same level of breakdown uh, for the different responses. The yes, no question, where I can see uh, the breakdown between yes and no for every one of the testers. And finally, the open question. And here on the open question, I asked to leave some feedback, and I can see some feedback here. And you'll notice the small stars here. These stars are used to add the quote to your report. And because we know that designers don't live in a vacuum and you need to present your learnings to the rest of the team, to the developers, to your product managers, uh, you need to be able to also highlight only the quotes that make sense for the report. And I'm going to show you in a minute what the report looks like. But before that, let's look at the testers. So if I click on testers here on the tester tab, you'll see all the individual testers and their journey. So you can switch between all individual testers. You can even download their session uh, as a CSV. You can click on more info here and see the metadata that we record on your tester. So by default, we record the browser, the browser version, the OS and the language. But what I didn't tell you is that the maze URL actually has superpowers. So whenever you share this link, you can add as many parameters as you want as part of the link. And all of these parameters will be recorded on your tester session. So let's say that you share your link through a MailChimp or through uh, an intercom or whatever other platform that you're using to share your email. We, you'll be able to pass down all the data that you already have on your testers, which will be helpful, for example, to uh, figure out which demographics is struggling versus the ones that are not struggling, uh, which source is responding the most. Everything that you want to know about your tester, you'll be able to pass it now to Maze. All right. So from here, um, a couple more options as well. If you're interested, you can export the whole maze as a CSV. You can set a password for your maze if you have some uh, proprietary data that you don't want uh, to escape the maze. You can connect your maze to Slack as well so that every response is you get an update on what happened during the, the maze testing session. And so we talked about the report. Let's try to see the report. So here I click go to report and I see this document that's automatically generated for you. And this report comes with what we call a usability score. And we give you a usability score for everything, for your maze, for every one of your mission, and then for every screen inside every mission. So here you can see a recap of your overall test. And this document you can share outside the organization, you can share anywhere. You simply copy and paste this link and share it with the people you want inside the organization, which is a great way for people to align on your research studies. So here let's click, let's eat. And you see the data that's that's captured here. And you can see that we have the general KPI, so the total testers, the missed trade, the duration, the success, the bounce. And you see that this is color coded. And the reason is that we'll benchmark your results against thresholds that we've set uh, against the hundreds of thousands of MAIS that have been tested through the history. And we'll be able to tell you why your numbers are good or, or why your numbers can be improved, so that you miss create your success or your bounce, so that you have a benchmark to compare yourself uh, when you're looking at your data. And then we show you the success analysis. So we show you where people drop throughout the journey and which, uh, and which screen they drop to. We show you the usability breakdown with the time spent on every screen and the miskick rate for every screen and the evolution uh, for every one of your screens. And then finally, the optimal path analysis, where we show you the screens that need to be reworked, the screens that need to be checked, and why they need to be checked, and the screens that are working, which is a great way to align with your stakeholders and what are the next steps and what actions need to be taken in order to improve your next testing session. Here, you can click the full analysis to see the full journey of your testers, when, where did they went off path, what happened where they succeeded, wh which, how much time they did they spend on every page, et cetera, et cetera. If you scroll down, you'll see the entirety of your report con uh, contains uh, the different charts that we generated for you. Uh, they contain the yes, no question, and then finally, the open question that we, we saw earlier as well. 
finally, and then we'll jump uh, into the questions, we can talk a bit about, and maybe if you have some questions about discovery, I'll, I'll show you a bit more about discovery, but two things that I want to show you before. Um, by default, when you import your prototype on Maze, we create a version for your prototype, which means that even if you have a Figma prototype, for example, you import it on Maze, and then you start making changes to your prototype, these changes won't be reflected on Maze unless you want to and you refresh your prototype. But this is great because it allows you to test multiple versions of your design at scale. And you simply have to create to click the import new prototype version in order to import multiple versions of your prototype, create different links that you can share outside the organization and get insights in what's working and what's not working on your different designs. Finally, we're going, I'm just going to show you very quickly the new discovery project. So Maze user testing was sought out uh, for people that wanted to test their design and people that wanted to test their prototype. And Maze discovery, which we recently released, allow people to test their IDs. So before going into the design phase, they it allow you to test the features, the IDs, and the problem that you want to validate before you even build the design. So here I'm going to create a random project called Places as well. And you'll see it's the exact same interface. So you have a welcome screen and a sync screen, but this project is not tied to a prototype, which means that you can use it to run surveys to your audience. You can use it to run uh, discovery surveys to your audience. And from here, what you can do is create new types of blocks as well, like the tree testing. So for people that don't know what a tree test is, um, it's an exploratory tool that allows you to understand how people think about the navigation within your, your product. So let's say, for example, that I want to, uh, I'm creating a website and I want to know where would people find uh, the contact us form on my new website. I don't have a website yet and I don't even have a design for the website yet, but I have this idea of how I want, how I want the, the arborescence to be like. So I'm going to create a task called uh, where would you find the contact us form? And from here, I'm going to create my tree structure. So I'm really going to create uh, the different layers for uh, my, my tree. So I'm going to say, for example, about us, homepage, um, let's say uh, for features, let's say. And so we can create as many pages as we want. And you can even create depths inside your tree, right? So we can say, for example, in the about us page, the team, uh, the company. In the company, I can create uh, a set page called investors, for example. And people will be able to navigate within your tree, just like they would navigate a real website, and simply select the screens where they would think to find this contact us form. And then this would allow you to see where people are agreeing on where they would find this contact us form. Finally, the two last blocks that I want to show you, and then uh, I swear I'll end up the, the long monologue, uh, are the card sorting and the five second test. And I can talk very quickly on the legal screen as well that we just recently introduced. So the card sorting, uh, for people that are not familiar, it's a way uh, to understand how people mentally associate IDs. So let's say that you're starting, for example, um, a grocery shop, and you want to know, are people thinking uh, of pasta as Italian food or as dry food? So what you would do is create different cards. So you create a card called uh, pasta, for example, rice and tomato, and you would create different categories. So you would create a category called dry food, for example, let's say uh, Italian food, Asian food. And what people will be able to do here is simply associate the card with the category that they think it fits into. So for example, pasta, Italian food, and rice, dry food, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a way to understand how people mentally associate IDs and how, what's the level of agreement in IDs when you're creating your product or your website. And finally, a five second test. So a five second test is more like a context screen. So it doesn't come with any questions. You have to ask questions at the end of the five second test, but it's a great way to assess uh, how people, uh, what people retain of your product. I'm going to create this five second test into my other places uh, very quickly. So here I'm going to import a new version of my prototype, as I mentioned before. So I have something in draft and I'm going to create a five second test. So here I'm going to create a five second test and I can even browse my prototype and say, display this specific screen for five or 20 seconds or how many seconds you want. And then I'm going to ask questions. So for example, um, what type of places can you record on this app? And so it's a great way to understand how what people are focusing on when you display them with a the screen and what are people retaining when, when you display them with a the screen. Finally, the last type of block is the legal screen. Uh, this is more for the enterprises, but it might be interesting for you as well. Uh, where it allows you to upload a PDF, uh, like an NDA, to sign an NDA for your testers, to sign a legal document for your testers as well, in order to move forward with the testing. 
So this is what we do at Maze. There's a lot more uh, that we can talk about. You have the ability to create teams. You have the ability to invite unlimited viewers on any plan, even free plans. Uh, you have the ability to create teams that have multiple editors on paying plans. So as you can see here, we have Maze founders, Maze demo, Maze. We, we have a lot of Maze teams. Um, here you can manage your teams. You can see uh, the whole team that's being there and you can create uh, Maze uh, together uh, and, and, and get the value together. And that's it. I think that that it was a good a good rundown. Uh, I'm happy to answer any question you might have uh, on the test. All right. Uh, um, all right. Thank you for that. Um, that was awesome. So we do have some unanswered questions in the questions tab, but it sounds like everyone's trying to get into the weeds of things. Um, Bazina, was there any any questions you wanted to pull out? <laughs> Yeah, there were so many technical questions I wasn't expecting. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's one interesting one, um, which is, so based on the current product, does the team believe that Mace is more suited for hi-fi prototypes or for earlier testing, such as wireframe, lo-fi? Lo so yeah, what stage is mm -hmm. Mace most useful? Very good question. So um, we have people that test really any stage of prototypes. And you get different values out of testing at different stages of where you are the design process. We have people that will take very, very low fidelity prototypes to the point where we had people actually take uh, photos of their whiteboards and use that as a prototype, right? And just input the, the, the hotspot on, on an Envision or Figma. And for this, what you really want to understand is, is the flow understandable by people? So a lot of the time, they will have multiple release candidates. They think, I have 10 different flows. Which one is the best performing when I show it to people? Uh, and the low fidelity is great for that because it allows you to prune and weed out the, the flows that are not working. When you get to a point where you have highest fidelity prototype, you really want to understand, is my copy, is my design understandable more than is my flow understandable? So for both cases, there are value that you can get out. Uh, and people will do different things, but we actually encourage people to test at all stages, right? Ranging from the low fidelity to the high fidelity prototypes. Cool. Um, so a lot of these questions are like very specific ones. Should I ask them anyway? Like, um, yeah, okay, totally. okay. So one of the questions from Ismail is, do you integrate Likert scale for questions so we can do real usability or UX scales? Yeah, li li Likert will be part of the templates. So one of the things that we are building right now is the ability for you to create templates and for us to provide you with templates of great questions that you can ask. Uh, and templates of great usability questions and usability standards like SUS, like a uh, like a uh, etc. Et so all of this will be available, uh, I think, by the end of the summer is a is a good uh, estimation. Uh, but I won't, don't want to get too too ahead of myself on the days as well. But yeah, it's it's part of the plan. Okay. Um, there's another question here from James. So is it possible to account for user and or technical error that happens during the test so that there is more confidence in the report? for instance, drop connections, et cetera? Oh, so what we want to do, so I use, I'm, I'm assuming this is related as well to our usability score and how we compute it. There, there is always some range of user error and people dropping. You have the ability to delete a tester session if you feel like this tester session isn't representative of the overall experience of the test. Uh, but we also want to allow you to um, adjust the usability score as you go. So being able to say, this is actually not a misclick, this is actually not a drop off. This is actually uh, something that should have been a, 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 an optimal pass. So all these things are things that we're also working on. Right now, we are, we are very one size fits all when it comes to our usability score, which gives you kind of a good benchmark to understand if your design is working or not. But ultimately, we want to, for you to be able to, to adjust it to the way you want. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, from Andrea, is there a way to mimic the thinking aloud aspect of synchronous usability testing, for instance, allowing to record audio. I'm concerned that if users have to type out their thoughts, they won't share the most salient bits. Interesting. So we have people that for these specific use cases, ultimately what we believe is that some mazes are tested with 20, 50, 100, even in some cases, thousands of people. So our vision is that you won't be able to listen to thousands of hours of audio in order to be able to understand what people are saying. 
Um, what we see happening though is that we have people that will share the maze on an unmoderated fashion. And then we do smaller session on a moderated setting. So they still use maze on the moderated session, but they also record the audio of the tester going through the maze. So it's a nice way to mix the qualitative insight that you would get during this session and the quantitative insight that you would get by sharing your maze in an unmoderated fashion. Okay. Um, then we have another question from Miguel. In the future, will we see any integration between the discovery module and the usability module and do complete monitoring of the progress of a project? Yeah, absolutely. Come, come work with us. Exa exactly. This is this is what, what, what we are actually building. So the vision that we have for Maze is that we want to exist at every stage of the product development process. If you remember the, the slide that I show you regarding the what's user research, we want to exist at the strategize, at the optimizing the assess phase, right? We want to be able for you to say a project actually is different things that need to get tested, ranging from an ID to a design to a product. And Maze wants to live at every, at every touch point of your product development process. Uh, okay, so we have another question from, from Darshika. Is there a way so that the designer or developer can directly connect with the tester? And is there any possibility that Maze would also support an Adobe XD in the future? Adobe XD is yes. Uh, we, are, we are working with the Adobe, Adobe team to make it happen. So that's, that's for sure. Regarding the tester and being able to reach out to testers, this is actually something that we'll be building in the next building cycle for us. I cannot say too much about it yet, uh, but you'll be able soon to manage your testers uh, in Maze and, and be able to reach out to your testers. So all of these, the tester management aspects of the platform will also be developed in the next six weeks. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, I think we've addressed all of the questions. We have one floating in the chat from Rob, and it's oh. how do you effectively get qualitative <clears throat> feedback in the test process using Maze? And do you get testers who provide this as the think aloud seems less easy to do in terms of having to type it as they go? Yeah, absolutely. So for the more qualitative feedback, um, we usually use the open question as a way to get these qualitative insights. The reason that we're also releasing this logic and conditioning uh, that you see as part of the, the Maze test is that we want to get deeper into the why, right? The, the, the thinking was, how do we allow people to create a sense of moderation in an unmoderated setting? So with the ability to create logic, you'll be able to say, if someone gives up, uh, ask them why they gave up, right? Or if someone went through a specific path, or if someone did a lot of misclicks, ask them why they did so many misclicks. So you're not prompting people with the wrong question at the wrong time. You're always prompting people with the right question at the right time. Awesome. I think that might be it in terms of questions. Awesome. This All is right. amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So I think we are we're good to go. Um, so thank okay. you everyone for being here. Um, thank you, Jonathan and Bozina, for being here and hosting and co-hosting with me. Um, this was so amazing. Um, so everyone, I know there's a lot of questions about whether or not this will be recorded. The answer is yes. And we will upload that to our YouTube channel. I am posting links in the chat right now. Everyone's saying it's this presentation was amazing. Um, so that's awesome, yay. Um, so cool. So everyone, I am sharing links to our YouTube channel down below and then our um, handle for our Instagram because we do a lot of um, postings on upcoming webinars and stuff there as well. So go ahead and give us a follow on Instagram and go ahead and follow Maze on Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, they will also be kind of, they will be sharing the recording on their channels as well. So. Awesome. Thank you everyone for being here. This was amazing. Um, thank you for spending your nights, evenings, mornings, whatever part of the day it is for everyone um, with us. And hopefully we can do this again soon. Exactly. Thanks a lot, everyone. Right. Thanks a lot right. for, for hosting us. See, see, yeah. see you thank later. you so thank much. You. We'll talk bye -bye. to you guys soon. Bye. bye. bye.